let's go over the minimum width real quick. So available to inner rows only, the minimum width field allows you to, to define a custom width that the row will display at. This can be said to be larger than the parent column result in breaking out of the container for more interesting designs, something like this. So uh, inner row minimum width is set to 40 uh, viewport width. So let's go over to our page. Okay, now this already has a width. So this is an inner row. So so here we we have two rows or uh, two two uh, sections within this row, creating two columns. And then and then I added a row, right? By by going to the main column, clicking that row, creates inner row. Then you click on the pencil for the inner row. And here we have the minimum width height. So if I take this out, what happens? Okay, so it goes to its original, um, to its default single image section. Now, if I wanted to break it out, I would do something like 50 video, um, uh, VW, viewport width. So, and then it breaks out. So pretty cool. You can do it in a couple different ways. Uh, but minimum width is, you know, is a fine way of doing it. Uh, let's do 60 viewport width. Okay, even bigger, right? Um, and so now you have to, you're gonna have to play around with it a little bit because if you go, I think 40 VW, it stays in its um, container. So sometimes you have to find like this breakpoint. Um, and for this image, it was 50. Um, because if you would have done 40, again, you really wouldn't have seen the change, right? So that's the minimum width. You can play around with that. That way you just have to understand that it's an inner row and then you set the inner row to 40 viewport width and it'll break out of its containers, uh, height, uh, uh, break out of its containers with the column width, um, as long as you... Uh, give a, a right value for it. Okay, so let's move on to Z index. Okay, and we'll go here for the Z index. So just to kind of give you guys an understanding, I'm going to click update and then I'm going to exit out of this so you can kind of see what I'm working with here because it, because in the um, in the edit with WP Bakery built in the actual editor, it, it flips back and forth so you can see it, but this is on top of that. So what we want to do is we let's get this green plant image on top of this, right? So let's say if we have some title over here, all that, and we want um, we don't want we want this to be behind that, right? So let's do that. Okay, so um, as you can see, you know it flips kind of back and forth. It's a little unhelpful with Z index, but um, that's okay. we we already know which one we need. So the Z index just acts as like, uh, I just think of it as a deck of cards and there's like a hundred deck of cards. And if you put it in the five slot, um, this is so right now you have it in the five slot if there's a hundred. Um, and if I want to put it, if I want to put this picture, okay. And also to note by default, I put that five in there. Okay. By default it's zero and everything is basically zero. It's on the same plane. Right, but this means it's five, so it's going to be the fifth layer on top of zero. So if we want, um, you know, I can keep that as five if I wanted, or I could just t change it to zero. Um, and I put this one at, so this one's at one. I'll put this one at, you know, ten, something like that. Okay. Then once we click update out of that then the plant should be above the picture now see boom and that's the z index it's just a layer you can think of photoshop layers this is the layer fifth layer this is 10 layer 10 is bigger than five and there you go that's why um so that be a little that's that should bring a little light to z index and to where it is extra class name is allows you to specify custom css uh, class names that will be applied to your row. This is useful when you need to target a specific row in your setup for additional um, CSS tweaking. So um, again, this is in the row, right? Um, 
and that's if you you know depending on what you need to do with CSS but this is where you can find it you go in the row and you have an extra class name right there so now we'll go to row ID and row ID is great um, it's a very useful tool so let's see let's let's make sure like let's uh, give an example we'll do pound learn right do pound learn and then um, let's just say uh, we'll make a button down here do a button and learn now and uh, then we'll do pound learn actually oops I made a mistake but here I'll show you the mistake so this is where you put the pound right the pound sign for it to anchor this is called a, a drop anchor so and this is how you can use an ID it's one of the many ways um, okay that looks good okay and then let's just uh, go to this column here and we'll center this content there we go it'll center it boom it's centered okay so if I click on this it's not gonna go right now because I accidentally did something wrong here you you do not put the pound in the row ID because it already has a pound on it it's, it's a row it's it's the ID of the row itself so it already has a pound so technically I'd be going pound pound so it already has a pound so you just you put learn to actually uh, tag it to, so you can target it um, and now when I click on it it goes to it right it does a drop anchor action so you click on it so click on that bad boy and boom goes and drop does a drop anchor so pretty wicked now let okay let's let, let me just show you outside in case it's not making it's not still not clear you click on learn now and as you can see in the URL pound learn it goes straight to that section so if you ever want to do something on the same page or if you have a nav bar overhead um, you know that has that or if you would just want to do a one pager or just a landing page or have sticky content that you know goes to each section you can do that so pretty cool all right now let's go to disable row and this is pretty um, pretty simple here but it is still very useful because you can try something out real quick and then let's say that you know it's still like a live page or something um, and you just wanted to try it but you're like oh, this doesn't work I gotta disable it so we'll, we'll disable this all right and it's not viewable it's not viewable in this editor and it's not viewable on the front page here right but it should still be in the edit page in the very back end editor section so we switch to back end and there it is see and it's still usable still useful um, but you just can't see it in the front end uh, developer or the front end itself but it is still there and you can still edit and you can still tweak it around um, it just you just need to make sure that you click into the row settings scroll down and re-enable it again and boom and once we preview that it's back right here okay so that concludes oh my gosh the row section the row sections uh, all the row sections um, for the salient editor which is amazing okay so that's awesome gonna put that into a little playlist itself for you guys next I'm gonna be going over all the rest of this I just wanted to complete rows uh, because you know gotta start somewhere and I'm going to probably be moving into either columns or salient studio I don't know uh, but uh, I will make sure to link everything make everything very visible and easy and simple to understand until we do a complete holistic guide on salient front to back so that you can do it if you have the will and the passion um, 
to do it at a high level yourself. So um, again, thank you so much for watching. Please check the links below. I, uh, you know, subscribe to my email list so you can get notified whenever everything comes out. I'm also releasing a super big course and advanced course pretty soon for Salient. Um, but this is after I complete all the fundamental stuff. Uh, that way it can help everyone um, uh, possibly using Salient. So hope this helps. Please subscribe. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon.